You're gonna fall. Down. You're gonna fall. Whoa. <laughs> you gotta sit, bub. You're gonna get hurt. <laughs> Come on. You are sitting. You're gonna fall. You can't walk. You want to try? You can't walk. You got to sit. You got to sit. You're going to fall and go boom. You can't. Gail? Yep, Gail. Gail. All right. I'm Dr. Stell, I'm the ENT. Okay. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so how's he doing? He's being um, <laughs> sleepy, huh? He's Kinda... sleepy, but he's fighting it hard. Okay. Okay. Um, and you guys were turn that off. I guess how did things go after you left the hospital? They were. I mean, he's, he's snoring, snoring really, real hard. like, and having a hard time. Okay. No, you cannot walk. You're gonna fall and go boom. Oh. Well, um, so I don't know. Did did Kyle? So Kyle was the the PA yeah. that saw you. Did he kind of talk about the procedure at all yeah. or anything? So, just you know, real quick, we'll he'll go back to the OR. We'll go to sleep. Um, they'll put the tube in his throat to, to breathe for him while he's sleeping. Um, we'll take the tonsils out, take the adenoids out. Um, so in terms of kind of the risks of the procedure, the, the risk of general anesthesia, and then specific to, to tonsil and, uh, and adenoidectomy, the thing we talked about is about a 1-2% to risk of bleeding after surgery. And that, is uh, continued for about two weeks afterwards. So low risk, but you know, about one, one to two percent of the time, <clears throat> yeah, um, you know, people have um, issues with bleeding. And most of the time it's a little minor, and it kind of stops on its own. Rarely we, we would have to, you know, go back to the operating room to stop. Um, otherwise, anytime you do surgery, there's a risk to the structures you're working around. So we're working through his mouth, so in this case, Lips, teeth, tongue, gums, uh, throat. The uh, eustachian tubes, which go to the ear, like when you pop your ear, that opens right next to the uh, to the adenoids. So when we take the adenoids out, we just have to be, be careful not to injure the eustachian tubes, and we are. So, um, is there, I guess the one other thing. No, you can, I can't let you go, or you're gonna fall. Sometimes kids have real big adenoids. Um, when we take those out, their voice changes a little bit after surgery, and that generally goes back to normal. Um, it, because the, the palate, the roof of the mouth, you know, when you talk, it closes and it's the throat, so the throat doesn't leak out your nose. And if they've got great big adenoids, and then you take those away, it just has to move a little bit hard, you know, kind of that the back wall of the throat gets moved because the adenoids are gone. So it just has to work a little farther to get sealed off and it sometimes takes you know, a little bit of time for it to start doing that. Um, he'll have, he'll be sore after surgery. Um, the big thing uh, is to keep pushing fluids. Um, you know, it's, if he gets dehydrated, uh, then you know things. Then he has a harder time. You know, if that throat gets dry, then everything's going to work. So, um, I for hours. he'll have just Tylenol, ibuprofen, uh, his hands, and just kind of alternate. Motrin, or no yeah, Motrin, okay. Motrin. Yep. Um, Motrin and Tylenol. Um, and then, did you bear then, did you bear? Yeah. So, uh, and then four weeks after surgery, you know, we want you to come back to see me. If he has any issues before then, you know, certainly any bleeding, we want you to get 